So I wanted to talk about how to install LockSeq and open your first graph. A lot of the tutorials are assuming you already have that set up and that might just not be the case. If you're that person, then this is the video for you. And I also will talk a bit about the differences between SaaS and LockSeq and why you have to do these extra steps to get going. Now, you might wonder what's SaaS, and SaaS stands for Software as a Service. Basically, it means Gmail, Notion, any web application that you just make an account, log in, and use it. And this has become the standard as the internet has grown. But it comes with a major drawback. Even though they'll take all the heavy lifting out of your hands, like the backups, saving it, storing it, making it available everywhere, you are giving them your data. and by design they have to be able to access that data else they can't provide you the service if google can't read my mail it also can't search through my mail and find me that one email i'm looking for that i had when i made a reservation three years ago so that's the benefits of SaaS. but if privacy is important then local becomes very very nice and essential what that means is that when I use LogSeq, all my notes, everything I've written down is on the device I'm working on. That means that if I'm in a plane and I don't have internet, I can still easily make all my notes, type, look things up because everything is there. But it also puts part of the responsibility on me. I have to keep these files safe because making a copy of your graph is trivially easy for anybody that has unlimited access to your system i mean if you have LockSeq open and you don't lock your system and i walk by i can just pop in a usb drive and make a copy in two minutes so you have to be careful this is the constant trade-off that you're doing when we're talking about security privacy and the work that comes with it don't fret too much though Nearly all systems these days have disk encryption, meaning that if you're logged out or your system is off, people can't access your notes. And if you, as long as you lock your screen when you walk away, nobody should be able to just carouse through it. And it's just as bad as if you don't leave it locked because people can still go through your notes and you might not want them. Definitely if you put like personal thoughts in there that need a little bit more context to be fully understood. Now, you might have heard about LogSeq Sync and how does that work then? Because you're sending your data to LogSeq, can't they just read your information? No, because they use zero trust setups. And what that means is the same as with a password manager is that you have a password to log in to the system, but you also have a password to encrypt your data. So with LogSeq, you have two passwords. You have a username password that connects you to their machine, tells you who you are, saying like, hey, I got data here. And you get a second password and you use that to encrypt all your data before you send it to LogSeq. So LogSeq just has this blob of unreadable mess to them. And all they know is that if you connect with a different device and you log in with your system, they can give you this blob of unreadable data and you can take that and take that other password you have and decrypt it. This is also why it's important to use different passwords for your login to LogSeq and your graph if you want to be fully secure. Now, I could talk about how to manage this on yourself, like if you're doing your own syncing, but that's a whole different in-depth topic and I'm not gonna cover that this week. We're gonna look at how to actually get LogSeq installed. So now the first step is to actually get LogSeq. And for that, you go to the website, logseek.com, and there you have a couple of options. So you have like the download button on the top and you have a download button here below like the examples this button auto adjusts to the operating system you are on so if you would go here with a windows or mac machine it would show a windows download or a mac download if the website does a bad detection you can still click on downloads on the top here and that will give you a page where you can just manually pick which version you want to have so for mac os for example that you can get an intel chip or an apple silicon chip version and also ios and android then after you download it, let's click on this to start the download in my case. So now it starts to fetch the app image for Linux. One more thing to know is that if you want really fine controls, like you need a specific version, 
you can scroll all the way down on the website and there should be this weird icon but that icon is from github and that is the source code for Luxy. because it's open source everybody can open it i'm gonna go zoom this in a bit this is the Luxic source code. Anybody can add, contribute to this. There's of course some gatekeeping to make sure that bad changes don't automatically get merged. But with a bit of back and forth, most changes will get added. And there you see an op sheet that says releases. Now, what does releases do? Every version of Luxic ever released will be here and there will be builds. So you see the latest version I've got here, the 093 beta. And if we go down, there's packages for Android, Darwin, which is uh, Mac OS, Linux, Windows, they're all under each other. And I can go down and go like to an older version and find it there as well. You won't often need it, but if the latest version for some case breaks things, you can always go here and say like, hey, I just need an older version that works until the new version comes out. Now, for obvious reasons, I already have Logseek running on this system, but I will make a couple of recordings about how the installation looks. For Windows, you click on the EXA and you follow the wizard and it installs Logseek for you. On Mac, you drag the application to your applications folder to install it. And on Linux, you right click on your download, make it executable, and then you can double click it. Logseek installed, but now what? First of all, you need to start it. And then I can just double click it. In Windows, you can find it in your start bar. In Mac, you can find it in applications. And you'll get this nice introduction. So it's a bit of text that should help you get along, shows you videos and things that you could do to get started. I recommend reading through this or at least skimming it to find out what you need. But if you really wanna make long-term notes, you need to be able to save them somewhere. And that's where this add a graph button comes in. So if I click on that, what it basically does is asks for a folder that it can put your notes in and that you can keep safe. So I can say, choose a folder. I get like my folder download. I go to my home, make a folder here. You have to make a folder because else it will complain that there's stuff in, but I usually call it something like notes. And personally, what I do is that I have this notes folder, but because I might want to have multiple graphs, I usually start with a personal, oh, it's a typo. Go back, make another folder, call it personal. So I make like a, a personal folder under notes. So notes are all my graphs and personal is my first graph. And this means that I can have multiple graphs under notes and I just have one place that I wanna secure and back up for later. Now I click on open and that should work fine. It should show me the empty journal and this is that blank page moment that you might be dreading where you're going like, okay, and now what? <laughs> Now, if you don't want to start from scratch, I made a quick start template or basic graph that you can download, unpack and open to get started quickly. Right, so now you have your Loxic installed and your first graph set up. A few very important things to know once you have this. One, make backups of your graph because it's local. That means that if it doesn't get copied anywhere, you might lose it use something like iDrive, a USB drive. I have one here, like something like this. Just something simple to make a backup. You can also copy it to a USB stick. Just make sure it's somewhere safe so that if anything happens to your system, you still have your important notes. That said, what happens often is that people copy these notes or place those notes on something like Google Drive or iCloud. And the problem with a cloud syncing service, I've seen this multiple times and I help multiple people with it, is that you get into like a tug of war between the cloud service and Logseek. And the end result, at least on the user side, is that Logseek is very slow. And then I get complaints going like, why is Logseek slow? Why, why doesn't this program work? So what happens is Logseek makes a change, writes it to a file, and then the cloud server starts uploading that file because it sees a changed file. But you keep writing and you write a lot faster than this syncing up and down to the internet. I mean, it's fast, but it's not that fast. So what happens is when you write your second work, Logseek wants to save that and then the sync service goes like, no, I'm still syncing the last change you made. And then it has to wait. And waiting when you're typing, even if it's just a couple of milliseconds, is a horrible writing experience. So if you have that, 
test if it's your if, if this problem is the case by moving your graph to like your desktop or opening a new graph on the desktop if you don't want to move files around and if it becomes instantly snappy and faster then you have this issue i'm going to ask go down in the description i'll put a specific link in it probably just a google form to collect uh, names from people saying like hey i had this issue and i thought it was logseq because i want to report that back and say like hey this is something you need to fix because i don't think that the people that open it for the first time and get like a bad experience will come complain about it they will just not use logseq which would be a horrible terrible shame right so things out of the way now that you have to set up what do you do with it because like if you look at this you go like okay this is this, this looks intimidating well it's like it's not intimidating because there's a lot of text but it looks intimidating. like what do i do now and my basic tip here because i'm not going to go in a full getting started guide because there's already videos about that and i'll probably make a video as well at some point is to just start journaling just take today's page and write down whatever you're doing or what you thought was interesting just copy paste a couple of links in it because um yeah, like making a video it might not look like much but the basic thing the thing that i hear most people say like this is why they like logseq is because the journaling is made so easy just opening logseq gets you a today page and you just write down whatever comes in your head and you don't have to block references you don't have to link it you just have a day by day journal and if you have a long journal then you can just scroll down to go back in time that's already enough enough to get started and then there's plenty of time to learn block references and linking things together and making complex structures uh, and if you do want a quick jump start then you know i highly recommend looking at my getting started template because i build it specifically for people to say like hey i would like a little bit more than a full blank slate but bus you might ask like okay great i have this set up but I'm using this in a corporate environment and I don't have time to go down a rabbit hole of 16,000 YouTube videos to explain to me how to effectively use this or go through a full course. Is there any quick way to get from A to B? And you're in luck because I'm setting up a workshop. The workshop is just one and a half hour video call where you can ask questions, do things, and where I have slides to talk about like the usage within a corporate environment, pitfalls to watch out, things to skip over. Basically all the experience I accumulated using this in large enterprise environments. If you wanna sign up, then there's a link in the description down below. And I just hope to see you there. And if not, no problem, because thank you for watching. Remember, you're awesome and keep it up.